A young white-haired young man with a ponytail on one side is a magnificent necromancer. His name, I am Tai. He is the object of adoration of all beings, talented, beautiful and courteous. A crowd of people surrounded him chanting his name and many other words. But this is not from the great love that this guy was talking about initially, because this charmer is about to come to an end. People are shouting for the young man's hands to be placed more firmly and tied more tightly so that he does not get out. He is branded a shameless body snatcher, a bone fetishist. Yatai answers them and says that they themselves are fetishists, not him. The green-headed man shouts that Tai stole his ancestor's body for his dirty deeds, and the baby with his wife is not of his blood. Yatai tells the man that he is a cuckold since he does not understand why his child is not really his. The auto dafe begins. The fire is brought to the post to which Itai is tied. The young man begins to pray and calls to the god of the dead to save him. He says that if he is saved, he will fulfill any prayer of this god. Here a white sphere appears in the sky from which dozens of snow-white hands come out, enveloping Yatai and putting the guy into unconsciousness. Yatai wakes up on a hill, where he is surrounded only by nature and not a single living soul. The sky is strewn with stars, like freckles. The guy says it's a very beautiful sight and looks like paradise. And since this is paradise, then he can do whatever he wants. He rips off all his clothes and skips around the forest until he comes across dozens of skulls and other bones. Seeing this, he thinks that this is still hell, but does not despair of this fact, because he is still alone. He continues to jump and run naked until he notices a cute girl watching him. The girl is wearing a maid costume, and her hair is snow white like the snow that has just fallen. Seeing her, Tai falls from fright, and the lady in turn giggles. Dumbfounded, Tai asks her why she is staring at him and whether she accidentally saved him from death. The girl continues to smile and tilts her head to the side, asking him if he is a necromancer. The guy, as if glancing, says that she is absolutely right, because he is the greatest necromancer. He puts on his clothes, approaches the girl and bows to her. He asks the girl about how she ended up in such a remote place. But the girl says that she is a system and her current form was created to simplify communication with the human race. The system, that is, it is responsible for the development of the village and it urgently needs a necromancer. Yet Tai meets the requirements of the system, which is why he was moved to this place. Kai says that he understood everything, but it wasn't Miss System who saved him so that he could help with the development. She says that everything is exactly like that, but as a payment she will make their young men a deed. Itai was very surprised when I heard this. The system says that he will become an employee of the Nesser Gaming Company. As an advance, she grants him 1% of the energy. Based on the results of the work done, she will give him even more. If he accepts the conditions, then he must give his consent by saying I agree. While the girl was talking about the conditions, the guy fell to the ground and hugged the girl by the leg, saying that he agreed to everything. The system removes him from his foot and gives him a slap in the face associated with divine power. The guy grabs his cheek and says that his mother didn't even beat him, but the girl doesn't answer anything, but only says that the process is completed. She tells him to get to work, because now he is an employee of the company. He asks the girl what he needs to do first. The system responds that its first task is to make a person. Hearing these words, the guy caught fire and offered the girl to have here and now. He knocks her to the ground, and she asks what he is going to do and the guy answers that a man. The girl disappears and transforms into a white sphere, saying that she did not mean reproduction, but resurrection. She says that the energy she gave him will help create the perfect living dead. She says now is the time to try your hand. The guy approaches the bones, takes the skull in his hands and says that now he will make beauty. He touches the skulls with his hand and the bones gather in a whirlwind in the middle of the clearing. From these skulls and bones he creates a beautiful naked girl. The system says that the guy has excellent necromancy skills, but he is an incorrigible pervert. Itai created a dozen more similar beauties and the system says that this place will be the point of appearance of Nesser players, who will soon be flooded by a whole crowd, so they need NPCs. She says that Tai should start construction, assign roles for the functioning of society. As soon as he finishes with the infrastructure, then let him start building a hierarchy and prepare for the meeting of the players. The system understands that the guy is not listening to her, but is completely immersed in the beautiful girls he has created. The system becomes a sphere again and absorbs the young man. After spitting him out, she says that from today, he becomes the head of Nizinchu village. Skeletons animated by a necromancer who have not transformed into beautiful girls are chopping down the forest. Itai is sitting on a stump looking at a map on which a hotel, a blacksmith shop, a tavern, a hospital is located. He says that in general everything is clear with the infrastructure, but still the village seems empty. Without thinking for a long time, his eyes light up with a spark of lust and he says that there is not enough brothel. A system appears behind him, which puts a heavy hand on his shoulder and asks what kind of brothel he is talking about. 
The guy, frightened by this attitude of the girl, says that there is not enough public transport. After all, players will need transport to move around locations. The system looks at the guy for a long time and asks him how the construction is progressing. Ty says everything is going great and the foundation will be ready soon. He says he is proud of his vision of the future village, because he is trying. The system studies the map and its layout, noting that the sewer is located next to the well and as a result it will lead to a terrible stench from the water, so its breading is terrible. If he is allowed to continue to work on the village plan, then it is unknown what all this will turn out to be. While the guy is talking about his success in planning, the system interrupts him and asks about how things are going with the resurrection. Yatai scratches the back of his head and says that the technique of the perfect summoning of the undead is difficult. The girl says that now he has only 1% of the total strength, and the application of the perfect resurrection requires incredible effort. In addition, you need to take into account the details of anatomy. It's not bad to resurrect a hundred people in a couple of days, but there are thousands more dead in this area, at least. The system tells the guy not to get into construction, but to fully engage in resurrection. The guy smiles and asks how many more dead are needed, because 6,000 are already ready. The surprise system turns to the young men and asks them to repeat the number of resurrected. The guy says he has resurrected 5871 undead, 2333 humans, 1314 elves, 666 orcs, 520 dwarves, 999 goblins, 36 demons and even 3 long-winged angels. All of them are in the cave. The young man says that he does not understand why such a diversity of races and how they ended up in this place at all. The system looks dumbfounded at the guy, because in such a short time he has already resurrected thousands. Hitai turns to the girl and asks her why she does not resurrect herself, because he has only 1% of energy, so the process is not particularly fast. He offers her to switch roles so that he builds and she resurrects. The system says that it does not belong to the dimension of Nesser, so its intervention is impossible. That is, neither spells nor attacks, the system cannot use. The guy doesn't understand how a girl can say it so confidently. The girl says that if they didn't need him, he would be dead now, so she says that she will continue building, and let him work with resurrection. Yatai says that he agrees with this distribution of roles, but the village is almost built and the system is stunned to ask how this is possible. The guy says that most likely because of the corpse stench, she did not notice. He snaps his fingers and the grayness and the cadaverous smell disappears. Because soon people will live here and we need to get rid of it. Instead of a gray landscape, a village appears almost built up, where green grass, live trees and the sun shines. The guy says he's great. The system says that it underestimated the guy. I am Ty, as the head of the village is definitely irreplaceable. The guy rushes into the arms of the system and says that he is very tired. It took him so much effort to absorb the stench that he almost died. The girl, because the guy hugged her without permission, starts pulling off her dress again to transform into a white sphere, but Ty jumps away from her and says that he understood her hint. The girl says that those whom he resurrected have no memory or consciousness. They will not be able to fulfill their roles, so how does the guy want to solve this problem? Itai says that all of the above is not a problem. Itai knows where the nearest village is, so he will simply reproduce the memory of the inhabitants, change a little and that's it, his creations will be indistinguishable from ordinary people. The system says that even if his idea works, their personality will still not be formed. Tai smiles and tells the system not to worry, because a personality can be formed from dreams. And besides, in the end, he can do everything, because he is the future god. The system says that Tai is perfect in necromancy. This is an indisputable fact. The young man approaches the system and says that he has already tested his method and points his finger at the girl he resurrected. A blue-haired pretty girl says that she is the owner of an Atelier and her dream is to marry Tai. The brunette says that she is the owner of the tavern and her dream is to marry Yatai too. A fateful brown-haired woman in latex says that she is the owner of a grocery store and her most important dream is for me to be in her bed. Tai hugs these girls and says that all their dreams are possible. The system tells him to calm down and apparently did not understand her attitude to his perversions from the first time. The guy says he is a sinner, but promises to improve, he swears by all the gods and feet. The system hits him again and he asks her to take it easy, well, he was wrong. It's okay, because he's still young. After a while, the resurrected girls walk around the built village and the girl from the Atelier says that she has a new range in the Atelier, so she calls everyone to look in. Another girl says that she is now coming up with new dishes. The system, after I punish Tai, watches the village and says that she still overestimated the guy and he needs to be looked after. She turns to the young man and says that he should take up the next stage. That is, build a hierarchy. The system says that in addition to the workers, a hierarchy is needed in the village. By accumulating combat experience and completing missions, players will raise their level. The higher the level, the greater the combat capability of the player. 
Also, monsters outside of Zinchu are also divided into ranks. The higher their level, the more experience the victory over them brings. From level 90 onwards comes the Celestial Sphere. And that's just Tai is now at level 90. The guy says he's incredibly strong. Then he thinks, since he is so strong, he turns to the system and asks about what level it has, probably less than his. The system responds to him that its level is 9999. The guy seems to freeze from this information and thinks about how to live now, knowing that there are such monsters, and one of them is his employer. The girl says that the distribution of roles is necessary. He needs to plan their actions and assign them according to their level. This is the right plot line. The guy does not understand and the system says that the main branch of the plot is needed, which will be divided into tasks. It will take all the guy's life experience and his imagination. Tai says he needs time to think and the system tells him to take his time. He needs to think it over well, because all the responsibility lies with him. They approach the village and the system says that soon it will be very busy. The guy says that more handymen are needed, for example, cleaners, because without them there will be a lot of garbage everywhere. Therefore, he decides to resurrect a couple of orcs as a brute force, but here's the problem of what gender these orcs will be. If the orc is male, then he will take all the attention of the resurrected girls to himself, but if it is a female orc, then the increased attention will be in his side and this does not please him at all. The system asks the guy if he came up with something and he says yes. At the same time, in Glenmorgan, some bandits in an alley threaten a man with a knife. The man then covers a little girl with himself. He asks what they need from him, because he has already given the bread. The bandit kicks the little girl's father with all his strength and he falls exhausted. One of the scumbags says that he has a lot of bread, but he will gladly take this little girl for himself. The father protects his daughter, but the gangsters say that she has not eaten meat for a long time, so they will take his daughter anyway. The man attacks the bandits and shouts to his daughter to run as fast as she can. The girl, having listened to her father, runs and asks someone to help her father, but one of the vile scumbags grabs her and swings a knife. But they are saved by the appearance of Yatai, who beats the bandits. He summons his creatures and orders them to kill the bandits. Tai turns to the father of this girl and says that he has a job with food, shelter and even medical care. He says that this man can take his whole family to the village, where they will be safe. The girl's father asks Yatai who he is and he smiles and says that he is Tai, the head of the village of newcomers. Tai has gathered a lot of such poor devils. He thought it would be much easier to find workers, but it turned out to be completely different. The crowd gathered in front of Tai with complaints. Someone from the crowd says that he has run out of iron, and therefore he needs help. Someone complains that the fields are not plowed and sown, which in their opinion is waste. Everyone is buzzing and complaining. So Itai asks everyone to calm down and then he will find a solution to the voiced problems. He starts explaining to them what needs to be done first and the whole crowd disperses. Turning around, the guy notices a girl standing behind a tree, whom he and his father recently saved in an alley. He comes up to her, squats down and asks her what she is doing here. The girl starts to panic and wave her hands. But the guy pats her on the head and tells her to come home because they are all tired and they need to rest. The little girl smiles and says that Tai should not forget about the rest either. The ancestors of this girl and her father are brave men who crossed the Hengduan Ridge. The father's name is Chen Lechu, and the daughter is Chen King Ning. Lechu, as a sign of gratitude, I brought Tai a gift of alcohol made by him. This drink differs from low-grade ale in a tavern. Lechu uses the knowledge of the ancestors. He makes wine from fruits in the forest. And the taste is amazing, so he gave him a tavern under his command. Of course, father and daughter were not the only ones. Tai received more than 100 victims and distributed them according to their skills. Thanks to this, the village has greatly expanded. Previously, there were only bones in it, but now there are real living people. From behind, the system approaches Tai, who is sitting on the grass, who is lost in his thoughts, and says that she sees his solution with a shortage of labor. The guy smiles and wearily says that he has solved this issue with grief in half, and there are even more worries. Now the uprising has almost happened. The system says that he needs to think carefully, because by hiring those citizens, he takes on another responsibility. Yatai starts talking about girls again and that there are a lot of cuties among the refugees, which is why his harem is expanding. The system is angry again and like a cloud hangs over the guy reminding him of his duties. She asks him if he has distributed the habitat of wild animals. The guy remembers in a panic that he was asked about it yesterday. But he forgot, so he will be punished again. The guy raises both hands, as if he gives up and says that there are only a couple of moments left, which he will quickly finish now. The guy enters the forest, where he sees the beginning of a battle between two animals. One of these animals turns out to be a high-level winged tiger. Tai doesn't understand how a beast of this level could end up in a level 10-15 zone. 
A winged tiger attacks a huge gray wolf, but the attack is unsuccessful and the wolf attacks him in the neck. This sight surprises the guy very much and he uses the recognition technique in relation to the wolf. It turns out that this is a gray wolf of 7 to minus 84 combat level, which is much higher than that of a tiger. It is not surprising that he easily dealt with the winged tiger, but how with such a level, the gray wolf ended up in this zone. Tai thinks that this wolf needs to be moved away from the village. But immersed in his thoughts, the guy does not notice that the wolf has turned his attention to him and sneaks up from behind. The wolf climbs a tree and tries to attack the young man directly from it. But Yatai turns around sharply the wolf will attack on his back. The young man begins to scratch the animal's tummy. And he, in turn, whines with pleasure. Itai thought about the fact that the power of this wolf is in his favor, because now all the animals will obey their alpha. After a while, the guy sat down on a stone and began a meeting with animals, where he explained to them about the habitat zones. He tells them that the meeting is over. The main thing is that they all adhere to the rules of the organization. He says that animals should defend their positions, follow the ideals of morality, morality, discipline. He tells them to applaud if they understand and the animals really start doing it. Tai sends animals to protect their habitats. Yatai opens the map and checks the layout of the village and surrounding areas. All the zones were distributed. He notices a rat of the first level, takes it by the tail and lifts it over his head. In his opinion, the level of such a rat is not enough even for a training beast. He puts his fingers on his chin and thinks about what he should do with this rat. But he quickly gets an idea and begins to shamanize the poor animal. After a couple of minutes, the rat gets level 4 and starts looking terrifying. It is covered with ulcers and scars, it has six paws and sharp teeth. I am happy with my work and Tai says that it's better this way. Tai could not imagine that the rat he created would be called the most disgusting in history by the players. The guy climbs to the hill, folds his arms on his chest and proudly looks at the village, which is almost ready. It's time to greet their players. At the same time, on Earth, where advanced technologies are flourishing, people learn about the appearance of a new game, because they receive messages that a real large-scale 60 VR holographic network game Nessar has been launched. The message also states that those who wish can apply for a beta test and become players now. In one of the multi-story buildings, a young guy is sitting at a computer in VR glasses. But the screen is not a shooter or an adventure game at all, but a game with erotic overtones, and so the guy decided to relax and use his glasses for a more detailed immersion in the game. He actively begins to engage in master but at the moment of climax, his game turns off and a notification about a new game from Nessar appears on the entire screen of his computer. The guy is dissatisfied with this arrangement and angrily says that this advertisement has discouraged all desire. He aggressively tries to close the ad. Nothing comes out of it and the ad gets even bigger. Due to the fact that this guy can't close the ad on his own, he uses an ad blocker and is happy that he succeeded. But the blocker can't cope and the advertisement reappears on his desktop. Which is why the guy furiously closes the laptop. After a while, he still manages to sort out the advertisement and he intends to continue what he started. But nothing comes of it because these videos and the game have been removed from his PC. He takes off his glasses and sighs heavily. He leans back in his chair and thinks aloud about the game Nessar, where only 50 players can participate in the beta test. Googie is conducting a reconciliation due to the fact that all major websites have been subjected to a virus attack by Ness, so the company is making every effort to find countermeasures to combat it. The company's executive director listens to the report and says that the Nessar ad is incredible and they can't block it. A holographic VR game is very unusual, because the implementation of such technology is extremely difficult. The beta test is available to only 50 players, but this is just a trick. Given the scale of this company, it would be pointless. The marketers in this company are at a high level. The executive director receives a call from a young man named Quan, his son. The guy asks his father if he has heard about the problem in the local system. After talking to his son, he turns to his assistant and tell her that it's time to move on to the blackout plan. The girl holds a flash drive in her hands and talks about what they will do with possible consequences and the director says that he will take full responsibility for himself. Juan sits in his room and tries to start the game again, but nothing comes out and the internet goes down. The guy registers in the Nessar system. At the same time, on the street, some big guys attack a fragile girl and try to kidnap her, but a brave high school student Shiji stands up for her and shouts to them that they allow themselves. The masked men say that another one has come into their hands. They ask the kid if he will climb into their car or if they will help him. One of the kidnappers starts running at the guy in order to attack, but the guy intercepts him by the hand and throws him over himself. He deals with two more of the same, but does not notice another kidnapper, who himself attacks the guy. Initially, the young man throws it away from him, and then feels a piercing pain in the abdomen because he was stabbed with a knife. The young man loses consciousness, but I see Tai in front of me. 
Chiji, being in a semi-conscious state, asks Tai to save the girl who was pushed into the car. Tai heads in that direction and blows up all the kidnappers. Yatai asks Shiji to calm down, but the guy does not come out and the necromancer says that he will take only his soul, but he will leave his body in this world. The young man opens his eyes and notices that he is lying on a bed in a bright room. Shiji looks down and notices that he has a chest, but nothing hinders at the bottom. Ji abruptly gets up, not understanding anything, hysterically asking about where his device has gone. Yatai appears in front of his face and says that the kid is too noisy. Chiji asks who is in front of him and Yatai says that he is the head of Zinchu Village. Ji says that Zinchu Village is a place from the village where new players gather. Tai replies that it is. The necromancer holds out his hand to Shiji and tells him that he is welcome at Nesser. Yatai has a cordial conversation with Shiji at the Martial Arts Palace. They discuss online games and how to reach mutual understanding in Nesser. Shiji looks at Tai in surprise and says that they were able to realize what was in the Masters of the Sword. Yatai proudly raises his head and says that they never give fake ads. That's why they are so cool. As soon as players get here, a combat and magic system is formed, or as ordinary people on earth call it, warriors and magicians. He tells Shiji this for a reason, because Ji will become responsible for the combat hierarchy. Shiji enthusiastically says that Yatai himself can easily teach, because before his eyes he easily lifted the car. Tai says that he just has a high level, and he can't compare with Ji in combat abilities. He says that he studied earth culture, and people there have very common washu the look of a hawk, the call of time, dancing youth, colored sun and so on. Shi Ji says that I Tai didn't quite get it right. Ji explains that warriors are divided into legions, archers, swordsmen, and many other legions. Tai says that this is his second point in the hierarchy. As soon as the players become stronger, they move on to the next stage. Having fulfilled the requirements of the system, players choose their own specialization, swords, halberds, and so on. Ji asks to provide everything to him, because he understands weapons in any case. Shi Ji is very interested in the magic system, so he asks Tai for the opportunity to meet with a magician. Yatai says that they temporarily lack a magic system and Ji did not like this answer at all. The necromancer pulls his hand out of his pocket and says he has something for Shi Ji. From his pocket he takes out three small bottles with various kinds of liquid, potions. The necromancer says that he has a couple of medicines to treat players, but it's not in his position to sell these medicines, much less look for a seller to sell them off his hands, that's another problem. Tai offers Ji to sell these medicines on his own behalf, because he is now the head of martial arts, and in training he will certainly not do without injuries. Shi Ji says that he will try to be easier, but at the same time there is an exciting question, what should I do if someone wants to steal these medicines? Tai says that Ji should take a fee immediately for training. Because in this case, even if someone wants to steal them, they still won't take much. At the same time, it is necessary to do a daily calculation of medicines and revenue. If something does not converge, then you need to calculate the thief and give him colored water under the guise of an enhanced potion, but for double the price. This is the punishment for thieves. Yatai smiles and says that he shifts all these responsibilities to Shiji. Ji asks to say what the name is called and the necromancer says that the name is deeply remembered and reflects the connection with Shiji himself the fragrance of Shiji. Ji is extremely dissatisfied with the name and asks the last question. Why when I Tai saved him, his gender changed to female? Tai says that it was just his innocent whim, because here he wants to build a harem for himself and that's just the same Ji in the image of a beautiful lady can help him. Shiji takes the spear in his hand and uses the skill chrysanthemum dissected by the power of the constellation of the dragon. Hitting Tai in the buttocks as a sign of punishment for excessive perversion. Yatai flies straight into the system room and she asks why he came to her. Tai awkwardly says that there was a little scuffle with the head of martial arts, who is not even bad. The system says it has access to Tai. She shows him the sphere and says that there are 50 players in it today and vessels need to be created for them. The first questionnaire that catches Yatai's eye is the questionnaire of Huang Quan, who indicated that he wants to be a sexy beauty in the game. Tai says that he is a pervert. And the system, in turn, explains to the necromancer what kind of blue sphere it is. She says that this is a measurement management system and it will help him in his work. She also adds that he will need to manage the forum and Tai asks what this means. The system gets angry and tells him that it asked him to study the earth culture where this information was indicated. The guy folds his hands in a supplicating gesture and says that he taught everything and taught a lot. The system asks what the guy learned and he starts listing a lot of names of actresses. And the system asks what else he managed to learn and, dodging, Tai says that there is a lot more. He begins to list anime, Masters of the Sword Online, Blade Dissecting Demons and a number of other famous titles. Realizing that Yatai is useless in questions about the form, she tells him that she will explain everything to him now. She says that the guy has admin rights, so he can delete, post, throw anyone he wants into the mud. 
the system asks Yatai to help her with removing negative comments. The guy, after reading the comments, writes to the chat that girls with a third breast size can register out of turn because he gets a bream from the system, which tells him that he is fooling around a lot, so it's time to start working. The guy goes to the clearing and sits down on the grass. He says it's time to get to work and start studying Quan's questionnaire. He says that he will fulfill the request of the guy and try to recreate him in the guise of a sexy girl. A little shamanizing, he creates a beautiful gray-haired innocent girl, which is extremely happy. The monitoring system says that there is only one day left before the end of the closed beta test. Itai continues to study the profiles of the players. This time he came across a player named Wang Jiu, where there was a strange requirement about the color of hair, because their colors should be multicolored, black and this put Tai in a stupor, as in general and a number of subsequent questionnaires. Someone asked that the character be majestic, but the necromancer did not understand what it was and how he should recreate such a character. He sighs heavily and tells himself that he needs to calm down. Because there are still many questionnaires that have not been considered, maybe there will be those who have normal and understandable labels. He looked through about a thousand questionnaires and flew into a rage in connection with incomprehensible labels for him, so much so that he broke the system window. A few days later, the young man lies exhausted on the grass. His head is spinning because of the work done and he says that now he understands why people hate customers. It's not the work that ruins people, but the stupid demands of customers who come to this job. He sits down on the grass, scratches the back of his head and says that today the gathering of players begins at the starting point, which means that he needs to distribute the roles. He looks up and notices the girl King Ning running towards him. She is scared and shouts to Tai, notifying him that trouble has happened in the village. Zinchu was attacked by a dragon called the Bronze Nightmare. His level is 85, which allows him to attack civilians without any problems and attack the village, destroying it into splinters. People in a panic are trying to escape from the fire that the dragon emits. People are screaming and looking for the head of Tai. Itai appears in the sky above the dragon and tells the bronze nightmare to stop the nightmare of the inhabitants. The necromancer tells the dragon that he is not trained in manners and does not know the rules of decency, and therefore Itai will teach him a lesson. He stands on the nose of the dragon and tells him to bow down in front of a strong opponent and hits the dragon right on the nose with his foot, stomping. He tells the dragon to leave and not enter his territory again. But the dragon opens its mouth, intending to use fire and attack the guy, but Tai notices this and hits the dragon again. Then he hears a voice that notifies that the beta test Nesser is officially launched. Players are asked to enter the game area before 12 o'clock, otherwise they give their consent to a voluntary refusal to participate. The game awaits the players and wishes them a good and enjoyable game. Here the residents disperse, and the system sitting on the director's chair says that the filming is over. As it turned out, the dragon attack is just a planned scene to attract players. Itai wipes his forehead and says that he is very tired and filming is so steamy. The girl says that she has already sent the footage to Earth, and now they can only wait for the players. The necromancer says that he was really looking forward to this day and therefore has already distributed tasks. Now the NPCs will help the players as much as possible and give out quests. The system praises the young man and notes that he has become more farsighted and it has now become calmer for her to trust him with the village. Itai says that a lot of views and comments have already gathered on their promo video, where people admire the graphics and what is happening. The guy says that after seeing the word Dragon Slayer, the beauties on the other side will want to become his girls and will fall before him. But it's not him on the screen at all, but another young man in a hat and mask, so a puzzled Tai asks the system who it is. The girl says that this is his alter ego, his name is Limitless. At the pre-release show, she cannot become a hero who killed a dragon to some ordinary head with an ordinary face. From her database, the hero should be with white skin, red eyes, blonde hair, and a black raincoat. He also attracts girls to the game, and for guys he will become an ideal and role model. All these words hurt Yatai. And the system continues and says that he should appear in such a guise in front of the players so that they all see a beautiful hero, because Tai himself, in her opinion, looks too mediocre. King Ning's father approaches Itai and asks the head of the village if he has seen his daughter. The guy asks the man not to worry and says that his daughter has become the first most important mission for beginners. The girl is sitting on a tree, escaping from many animals of different levels. She screams into the void and scolds the head of the village, calling him a deceiver because he promised her to go play with toys and eventually threw her up a tree. She would never believe him again. The father believes the head, his words that the girl is safe, but his heart is still restless. At this time on earth, Wang Quan is preparing to enter the game because the pre-release turned out to be very good. He puts on VR glasses and enters his password. The game is being logged in. Wang Quan plunges into the game, where he opens his eyes. He notes that it is very bright in the village of Sinchu. 
The guy looks at his hands, and then his chest, which he begins to knead and says that he will just enjoy what is happening. Suddenly, a guy who is also a player approaches him from behind. He says that Quan is beautiful and introduces himself as a knight of the avant-garde. Wang Quan introduces himself, but his voice is not soft and gentle at all, but bass and rough. Other players begin to approach them, who introduce themselves and talk about their belonging to a certain legion. Here the player appears in the form of an adult handsome man with blue hair, to which the girls run up. Quan asks the knight of the avant-garde who that person is and the knight says that this man is breaking records on all forums for all comments, and therefore he has many nicknames. At noon, all 50 players are already assembled. Wang Quan says that of the 50 declared players, he sees only four who are around him. A knight of the vanguard awkwardly scratches the back of his head and apologizes for blocking the view of the other participants. He steps aside and Quan sees a lot of other players. The system notifies players that the task for beginners is saving baby King Ning. The players are given a short plot of what happened. They are told that the daughter of the tavern owner went for a walk in the forest and has not yet returned. Her father can neither eat nor drink because she was very worried about her daughter. Heartbroken, he turns to the village headman for help, but then help arrived in the form of brave warriors who must help find King Ning and return her to her father's house. It has recently rained and the ground is still soft, so it will not be difficult to find traces of baby King Ning. Find them and bring the little ones back to the village. The Knight of the Vanguard Huang Quan and a number of other players, guided by the girl's footprints, follow into the forest and shout that King Ning is waiting for them and they will certainly save her. Players admire the game and talk about what's so cool about it. In this world, players will drown and weasel, but to begin with, some players want to go to the wasteland. According to some, the mission is not the most important thing and it can wait, so it's better to explore the village. Those players who violated the rule of the first mission receive a warning that they need to complete the primary task before the study, but they do not listen, because wherever they want, they go there and no one will stop them. Observing this group of people from the air, Yatai says that earthlings are in their repertoire as always. They were asked an understandable language to save the baby King Ning. So what the hell are they going to the village, where they are not allowed to enter yet? The system sitting next to Tai says that if people always did what they were told, there would be no wars and other harmful events in the world. The necromancer looks at a group of people and says that they made their own choice, and therefore it's time to take responsibility for it. This group of players is overtaken by an earthquake. The ground under their feet splits and someone's paw comes out from there. But at first it is not entirely clear who is climbing up to them from under the ground. But after a couple of seconds a disgusting rat appears in front of him, which was created by me with his own hand. A huge rat attacks unruly players, killing them and calling other relatives to feast on the prey. As a result, there are only three people left from the group who got into a hopeless situation because they were surrounded by about a dozen rats. In less than a minute, the players Darrow, Jimmy, Dure, Aziz, Muhan and Albina dropped out of the game due to disobedience. After seeing the icon about the knocked out players, some of the survivors and those performing the task come to the conclusion that it is quite dangerous in the world. They run along the path, as Quan stops abruptly and demands the same from others, because they face a problem of a serious scale compared to the screams of their comrades. There is a group of huge rats in front of them, but without thinking twice, one girl attacks the rat, attacking that and defeating it. The knight, looking at the girl's attack, decides to test his theory, and therefore hits a stone wall, which shatters. The knight says that his theory is that in the game their powers gradually increase. In real life, none of them could break a stone, which means they have nothing to fear and they can engage in a full-fledged battle with rats. Yatai, who looks after them, smiles and says that this group is not a blunder at all, because they did not run away from the rats like blockheads, but joined the battle. Having dealt with the rats, the guys decide to continue their mission to find Baby King Ning, and Tai is surprised that people can work together in a team. The players approach the tree and notice that the girl's footprints were disappearing, and then King Ning says in a thin voice from the tree that she is upstairs. She cries and asks to be taken down from a tall tree. And he shouts that the village headman is a terrible scoundrel. The players don't quite understand how the little girl was able to climb almost to the very top of such a high and huge tree. Neither the knight nor the quan will be able to climb that high, so they are in a very puzzled position. But then the voice is given by the Asura player, who is a monk. Asura asks to let him climb a tree and get the girl. The monk jumps with a run and grabs the tree table, sticking his fingers into it, and Tai is surprised at the capabilities of shale and monks. He watches the players and involuntarily notices that they are divided into two groups. One is trying to save Nin and get her, but the second group is discussing anything but a rescue plan, they just want to have fun. Itea is surprised by human indifference. The monk climbs up to baby King Ning and asks how they are. He asks her not to be afraid, because they are here to save her. He holds out his hand to her and asks her to grab it, but King Ning thought about it, but still gave her a hand. 
Asura hugged the girl with one arm, simultaneously praising her for her bravery. But the descent becomes a difficult obstacle for the monk, because he spent all his strength just to climb up. The knight freezes this fact and says that Asura needs help. Although their strength has increased, but they still have a limit. The tree on which the young man and the baby are now is very high, which means Asura spent a lot of effort to climb it. If they don't hurry up, but the monk will break and they will be smeared on the ground with the girl. A guy with a girl in his arms is holding onto a branch with the last of his strength, which is about to break due to the fact that it will not withstand the weight of his body in King Ning. The branch bursts, but Asura holds onto the trunk with a death grip, and the baby begins to panic and say that they will break. The monk tries to cheer up the little girl, hugging her with two hands already, because he fell from a tree. The knight of the vanguard catches the falling monk and the girl, and Tai, watching this, exhales with relief because he was already ready to use force in order to avoid an accident. The players surround the monk and King Ning wondering about their condition. Asura says that if it wasn't for the vanguard, then everything would be bad, but thanks to the knight, they are fine. The players and King Ning are walking along the path that leads to the village when red feathers start falling from the sky. The players don't understand what's going on, but King Ning immediately understood. The girl screams in fright and says that the trouble happened and she was discovered. She says that she has the treasure of the mountain king, so all these animals have come for her. Huge birds, winged tigers, dragons, snakes and a number of other unprecedented animals appear in front of the players who are ready to attack them. Yatai stretches quite a bit and says that it's time to add a piquant spice to the plot of the game. Huge red birds start attacking players from the air, and a winged tiger sneaks up on them on the ground. One girl takes baby King Ning on her back and shouts to her comrades that it's time to get up. Players are running away, running as fast as they can. Wang Quan realizes that the tiger is not lagging behind, but is catching up with them, so she notices a vine in the forest and decides to climb a tree. But a red bird is waiting for her in the tree, so Quan runs along the branches, jumping from tree to tree. The red bird chooses a new target, a long-haired young man and tries to attack her. But the knight of the vanguard asks the guy to duck, and thanks to this he avoids the fate of being lifted into the air. The knight grabs the bird by the tail and hits it on the ground. The young man thanks the knight, and he smiles and says that they need to get to the village faster. Hitai watches the players and remembers those who indifferently stood on the sidelines during the rescue of Ning. He snaps his fingers and the ground under the feet of those players diverges and they fall into a huge pit and die. The Avenard wanted to help them, but the blue-haired man says that it's too late and they can't help them anymore, and therefore they need to go to the village faster. They almost approach the village, as one of the players says that it is impossible to go there, because they are being chased by a huge pack of animals that can destroy all the villagers. The blue-haired anti-magician says that the beasts are all just characters of Xinxu. The task of the players is to return King Ning, so this will be the only right way and everything will change for the better. The knight agrees with the anti-magician, but at the same time he says that they will not allow innocent people to suffer. Players send King Ning to the village and form a wall themselves, defending the gate so that the animals cannot pass. Tai, who was watching them, takes out a handkerchief and wipes his tears, saying that the guys did a good job. He transforms into his alter ego, in order to appear in front of the players to put an end to their first test. A funnel of clouds forms in the sky above the players' heads. Lightning begins to sparkle, which strikes the ground, where the limitless appears at the place of impact. The knight sees the young man and asks his comrades who this guy is. One of the girls says that this is the guy from the pre-release. Yatai in the image of the infinite raises his hand, in connection with which magical runes fall in the sky from which a sword appears, which flies at great speed towards the beast. The sword hits the ground and creates a shock wave that hits the animals and they die. Limitless snaps his fingers and creates a barrier that protects the village gate. The guy says that now no predatory monster will approach the village of Zinshu. The solar bastion, which was created by him, will protect the village. Limitless says that he does this not for the sake of the players who are strangers, but for the good villagers. And if the players dare to harm the residents or break the law, then let them not blame him for his ruthlessness, because in that case he will wipe them off the face of this world. One of the players, a cute blonde, turns to Yatai and asks him about the opportunity to ask a question. She clears her throat and asks if he has a girlfriend. Limitless says it's boring and leaves. Returning to his true form, Itai says that he would like this. In his room, he falls to his knees and with tears in his eyes says that he just ruined everything and rejected the feelings of such a sweet girl, because in fact he wants such a beauty for himself. Then suddenly little King Ning runs into his room, crying and calling him a scoundrel. Itai's heart seemed to be attacked by the swords of conscience when he saw Ning cry. The girl continues to cry and says that he left her on such a high tree and she was scared to death. Itai walks up to King Ning and pants her head apologetically. He says it's his little secret that you can't tell anyone. King Ning says that he offended her and she is sad now. 
The guy pulls out a toy in the form of a cute bear from his bosom and hands it to the girl as a sign of apology. The girl takes the bear and remembers that she lost it at the moment when she and her father were attacked in an alley. Kai says that last time the scoundrels tore him up. Well, he in turn asked his sister the tailor to fix this bear. He says that there is very little left and the task of the newcomers will be completed, so he asks her to help him one more time. The baby starts laughing and agrees to help. The players are still standing near the gate of the Ancient One, without entering it. Here they are shouted by Yatai, but in his true form. He asks them if they accidentally saved baby Neng. Huan asks him who he is and the guy replies that O is the main village and his name is Tai. The players don't seem to take the guy's words seriously. Because he looks too young, so he tells them that the head is his father. Inside, Yatai is furious at the fact that he is not taken seriously. But taking himself in hand, he continues. The young man says that as a thank you they can enter the village and start working in it. They will also be provided with housing and food. Among other things, he will teach them some spells. And the first spell is intelligence magic. A system alert appears that congratulates the players on completing the mission. From this day on, the player's death, injury or departure from the server will not affect the player's status in the beta test in any way. There is also a warning that if they are eliminated by Limitless, they will lose the opportunity to participate in the beta test. Players are prohibited from performing actions contrary to the law of morality, violating the rules of the game. Yatai tells the guys that the magic of intelligence can be applied to everything in Nesser. The use of this magic technique can show the name, level, skills and other useful information. The level of players will gradually increase, and over time they will be able to learn higher level magic and techniques. The more they use skills, the higher their skill will grow. Also, due to the fact that Tai is the head of the village, he says that they will always be able to contact him if they have problems and questions, he will be glad to them. So he tells them welcome to Zenshu. Wang Quan says that the god of Nesser has endowed him with power and uses intelligence magic. He casts a spell and an information window appears, where information about him is indicated. It shows the name, status, strength, agility, physical strength, wisdom, spirit and charm. The level of each of them is not high and is at most 10, so the other players laugh at TSUAN. There is a reminder where it is indicated that since Nesser is an online game with a 6D immersion effect, there are many differences from the usual online games and nuances that they need to understand. The system asks them to be patient and listen to the rules of the order in the village of newcomers from the headman. They should listen carefully, because this will help them enjoy the game faster. Yatai clears his throat so that the guys pay attention to him and says that he has some medical skills. If in the future they suddenly get hurt on assignments, then they can come to him for help. Although the village is small, but still there are the necessary amenities. They include a martial arts hall, a tavern, a hotel, a blacksmith shop and even a clothing store. You can find a good job in the forge. They will be able to sleep in the house of a peasant friend or in a hotel, but rest on the street can cause unnecessary discontent and criticism, so it is better not to implement it. Wang Quan asks the headman what can be done within the village. Itai says you can find a job. For example, the blacksmith Alpha lacks several students, and the butcher Puja has assistants. Hunter Gondor needs people who are able to destroy monsters, and the father and daughter in the tavern do not have enough servants. Players can find a lot of places where they need help. But if one of them is thinking of becoming a student and they have a little extra money, then they can go to the martial arts hall. There they can find a curator Shiji, who teaches combat techniques. Money can be earned by killing rats. Their meat and skin may need just the same butcher Puju. Tai also advises them not to leave the village yet, because even though he can heal, their body will burst into pieces and then he will be powerless. A brunette girl asks the headman where their magic items are and how to use the inventory function. The head of the village says that there is no such function and the number of things they can carry depends only on themselves. Behind the external calm, Yatai is panicking inside, because he forgot about this function. The players, having heard this information, also became sad. Anti-Mag says that first they need to find a job, because according to the headman, they need to get out of the game in places like hotels. But if they don't have money, then hotels will become very problematic. Quan is unhappy, because they are in the game and wanted to relax, but in the end they will also have to work. Now each of the players wants to ask the headman a question personally. And these questions are very strange and I'm thinking about what kind of mentally retarded players he got. The knight of the vanguard approaches the baby King Ning and asks her to take him to the butcher and the girl gladly agrees to help one of her rescuers. They approach the butcher's shop and Pooj, seeing the girl, asks how she is doing. The knight approaches the butcher and starts a dialogue with him. Then King Ning sees her father, who runs to her with all his legs and hugs her, because he was very worried about his daughter. The girl starts telling her father everything. On the street, Itai is called by someone's angry voice. 
He turns around and sees King Ning's enraged father. Tai understands what awaits him, so he awkwardly asks what he needs. King Ning's father has a knife in his hands and he looks at Tai, who begins to justify himself and say that if they give him a minute, he will definitely solve everything and explain. He snaps his fingers and the players disappear. He is left alone with King Ning's father. He tells the man that he will deal with him now and falls on his knees in front of the man. He tells Le Chu that he understands the wrongness of his act, although he lent King Ning, but it was done for the development of their village. He tells Ju that he will think things through more carefully next time and won't bother King Ning and Le Chu. Tishayu says that this time he will believe the headman. Itai returns to his room and immediately lies down on the bed where Dakamakura is lying with the character Zio AI. He hugs a pillow and says he missed her because he was too tired at work. It was a hard day for him. He abruptly gets up and thinks that he promised someone something, but does not understand to whom and what. He decides not to delve into it and pulls out an erotic manga and starts reading it. At this time, on the ground in the 6th western district of Silicon Valley, the office is discussing the game, which is the purpose of the meeting. At this stage of technology development, the appearance of a holographic virtual game is impossible. The implementation would require not only a lot of heavy-duty equipment, but also a lot of high-tech chips that are 30 or even 50 years ahead of the current one. At least, such an answer was received by one of the men in the office when they demanded to calculate all possible ways to create an environment similar to the one in the game Nesser. Father Huang Quan says that modern medical technologies, such as brainwave transmission or sixth sense research, do not meet the requirements of full immersion, and holographic visualization is just a general assumption from science fiction. But it is extremely unusual that this game looks too perfect. One of the men says that the difference between VR and holographic visualization is about the same as between heaven and earth. The essence of VR technology is the creation of a reality that only stimulates human feelings to achieve the desired effect. But holographic virtualization, as shown in the live broadcast of Nesser, does not affect human feelings, but directly transfers consciousness into the virtual world. Here the discussion turns to the fact that if this could be achieved in the game, then human consciousness can become immortal. But at the same time, in order to enter the Nesser, it is required that the player wear not a special virtual reality helmet, but an ordinary helmet, regardless of the company. Everyone gathered is already starting to have a headache because of the discussions, because it's hard to understand. Then a man with a crazy look bursts into their office, which says that he has figured it out. After 48 hours of continuous overtime work, he found a solution that will definitely work this time. They will cut their game video for 15 seconds and then ask for approval and post it on the websites of major video platforms for advertising. But the link will not lead to a real Nesser, but to the web version for only $1.999. The first donation will give the best equipment in the game for only 5 yuan. In case of making 10 yuan they will give the title of Game Master. In less than a month, their company will earn a lot of money and then they will be associated with Nesser and considered them. After listening to these crazy words, the boss asks to take this madman away. Another man suggests not to imitate the Nesser, but simply to destroy it. At this time, in the prefect's room, Yatai is still reading manga in an embrace with Dakamakura. Here his idol is violated by a system that went in without knocking. The guy gets scared and asks the girl to give him some personal space. Now he wants to be alone. The system says that Tai's personal space is reading vulgar comics. Tai asks what the system wants from him and she says that he just needs him to go with her to the plane where the system and the game servers are located. It is necessary to put in place greedy people who want to monopolize the market. In the 6th Western District, Limitless and the system appeared at 3. At this time, the exit of Nesser raised everyone's ears. So the question of how to resist the aggressive policy of Nesser is being solved. Some were willing to cooperate with the company, while others were in favor of limiting the company's work. Two hours ago, top companies from all over the world began to gather conferences, trying in every way to get to Nesser in order to get a unique VR technology and for this they are all ready to promote the game on their platforms. Itai asks the system what is the plan of action. The system says that it would not want them to promote at the expense of other companies, because this could make loyal players suffer. She says that the guy should show people his strength, because she allows him to act on his own. In the presidential administration, the president reads a summary about Nesser, where it is indicated that their technologies, they are ahead of everyone by 30 years. The president believes that this is complete nonsense, maybe it's all the tricks of aliens. A man calls the intelligence unit in the case of Nesser. At the moment, they are investigating three players who are participating in the beta test, conducting research on their bodies. The study showed that all three players, during the game, were simply in a state of normal sleep. This explains that it is the helmet that causes the brain to fall asleep. After that, the helmet can control all the functions of the body. 
Theoretically, with the help of this technology, hackers can gain control of the entire planet through VR helmets and the connection is broken. The president on the other side is answered by Limitless, who says that he will not allow their players to be harmed. The president understands that he is conducting a dialogue with a member of Nasser and demands that the phone be returned to his subordinate. The president says that the 6th Western District is a developed company that would like to cooperate with Nasser, so he will personally send employees to them to discuss details. Itai says that he is not interested in the president's proposals at all, so the president says that he will do everything possible to limit the capabilities of Nasser. Limitless resets the call and appears right in front of the president's face, sitting on the table. The young man says that he is glad to meet the president and is the administrator of Nasser. Limitless tells the president that he was allowed to do as he pleases, but he does not want to kill the man, so he takes the president by the shoulders and disappears with him, but immediately returns back. The president looks terribly scared and the guy says that he has only one condition, not to appear in their way anymore. We cannot allow the game to be banned at the state level. Tai says he doesn't have much time for the president. And besides, the young man still has a lot of things to do, so if the president doesn't agree, then the guy will make additional demands, well, throw him into the void. The frightened president says that it depends not only on him, but also on a number of other people. The limitless simplicity of everyone's photo and address. He will drop by for tea and talk to them. There are many territories where there are their players and he will not miss anyone. Itai returns to Zinchu village, to his home. He jumps on the bed on Dakimakura with a run, apologizing to her for being late at work. The system appears and again without knocking. The girl asks him how he forced those people to obey him, and plus they didn't even try to resist him. The young man smiles and says that he is just moving their emptiness. The system asks what the void is and Tai explains. This is the zone where time stops. He can leave them there forever and they won't even be able to die. The system says it has heard about this, but it has also heard that people who fall into the void go crazy. Although they need just such normal crazy people, because they are convenient for cooperation. And they also made it so that if his conditions were met, they could get out of there. For example, if people can write a billion word text or draw 300 pages of comics, then only then will they be able to get out. Besides, if the content does not match the quality, then everything will have to be redone. Concentrated work will not allow them to go crazy while they are there. They are trying their best. And if they manage to get out of there, they become even more submissive than they were before. A handful of presidents are already gathering meetings where they prohibit all governing bodies from influencing the activities of Nesser in any way. The system is surprised by the capabilities and ingenuity of the young man, and he thanks for the praise. The girl says that thanks to the guy, their players are now safe and can play without interruptions. The players come to, lying on some house. Huang comes to his senses and says that he is glad to enter the game. Wang Quan says that first you need to find a job, but then he feels dizzy and that the body is heavy. His condition raises a lot of questions and he calls up the information menu, where it is indicated that class, ordinary resident, condition, lower back pain, light hunger. The player spent the whole day without food, in this regard, characteristics, energy, dexterity, strength for 5 hours. Wang Quan is very surprised by this. Wang Quan is surprised by the fact that negative effects are imposed in the game for the fact that the player did not sleep or did not eat. A knight approaches him and greets him. He says that yesterday he learned from Puja to cut meat and suddenly dropped out of the game. Then the butcher put him in his cozy room. Later, when he entered the game, his body felt like it was brand new, so he was also treated to food. Quan understands that the most important thing in this game is to eat and sleep. The knight tells Suan that he can go to the tavern and relax there, relieve tension, namely negative effects. Quan comes into the tavern and asks the manager if it is possible to rest with them and a cute red-haired girl answers her that a day costs 300 gold. Quan, when she heard the amount, asked if it was possible to borrow, because she didn't have much money. But from a nice girl, the red-haired one turns into a mean girl and says that if there is no money, then let her go, because she will not allow hanging around for free. Quan is about to leave, but the tavern owner stops her and says that she is quite busy, so she can offer her to do the routine with her, and if Quan is satisfied with it, then she can stay. Wang Quan lights up and says she agrees to all the conditions. She knows how to work in Excel, Word, Photoshop and much more. The tavern owner does not quite understand what she is talking about, but Quan bows and says that she will do anything and wants to become an apprentice. The hostess says that Quan is talking nonsense but her sincerity buys. The girl gives her a settlement book. If she immediately understands, then the work will continue to be easy. Quan thinks it will be easy to figure it out. He has a three in math, but he can handle it. 
He opens the book and his eyes pop out from the fact that nothing is clear in the book because there is a hitherto unknown language. Quan asks the hostess in what language everything is written, but the hostess says that the girl is probably illiterate because her apprentice should be able to read. Quan tries to come up with a simpler language, but the hostess gets even angrier and says that she already has the easiest way to write. Why do these foreigners always climb with their charter? What if Quan is deceived or she makes a mistake somewhere? Then how will the hostess sort out her problems? The girl grabs the hostess's leg and almost with tears in her eyes says that she really wants to learn from her. The hostess says that in this case, first she will teach you to read Quan, then count, and in return the girl will work in the tavern for free for a few days as payment and Quan understands that you can forget about the salary for now because she has already angered the hostess of the tavern quite a lot. This is about how Huang Quan turned from a constantly exploited high school student into an exploited apprentice. So he also has to learn a foreign language. After training with the owner of the tavern, a new notification appears, where it is indicated that Huang Quan has acquired a new skill Paley language, having successfully become an apprentice. In his room, the head is still reading erotic comics and comics, eating chips at the same time. Here his pleasant pastime is disrupted by some night without knocking. Yatai manages to clean everything up in a second, adopt the pose of a sage. He asks the visiting knight what he needs. The knight says that the head is unrealistically cool, he also has time to study. Tai says that he is overpraising him, because getting better is the main duty of the head. The knight says his name is Kim and he has an offer, but he needs a Tai's support. Kim says there are a lot of dangerous rats outside the village, which of course helps them train and all that, but going out blind is quite dangerous. Therefore, Kim would like to ask the head to help them and build a watchtower near the village, from which there will be good visibility and it will be possible to hide, if anything. Yatai says it takes a lot of money and resources. Kim smiles, awkwardly scratches the back of his head and says that he will close the money issue himself. And he also asks if he can build his house within the village. Yatai disappears and turns to the system asking her for information about Kim. The girl says that Kim is not very rich, but the 6th district provides him, so he has money. They discuss donates, what to spend them on, and so on, and the system says that they will divide the donates 999 to 1, while one is part of the profit I am melting. The head returns to his room, where Kim has been waiting for him all this time. Tai tells the knight that he can build anything, but first he needs to buy land and then he can do whatever he wants. The price of a piece of land is 5. 0. 0. This price shocks Kim. Tai says that if Kim wants to buy land, then he needs to contact the technical support of the site. Kim, hearing about the site from the NPC, is surprised, because the head answers as if he is a moderator. So Kim asks Tai if he is an employee of Nesser. Yet Tai understands that he has stirred up too much and therefore says that the price is not his whim and expels Kim. Closing the door, Tai smiles and realizes that this is a free profit for him. The system is already in Yatai's room, where it checks the information. A notification arrives stating that funds in the amount of 10, 0, 0 yuan have been received about the company. Tai says that for Earth people this is a big sum, and the system responds that for the corporation of the 6th district it is trifles. Yatai wonders what Kim is going to build for 10 million. The embassy, something to connect with the earthly world. This is quite possible, because the only place where the two worlds touch is Zinchu. The system says that apparently those they intimidated now want to capture them. Itai asks the system what it will do with all this money and she replies that they will be prize money. Wang Quan sleeps in the tavern when other players come in to visit his friend. They are making noise, shouting, and Quan asks them to be quiet until the hostess of the tavern starts shouting for them to close their mouths, because guests are resting in the tavern. Quan says that the hostess hates the noise in the tavern. She asks why they came and the players say they came to see her progress and skills, and she tells what. Trade, level 1. The player is so universally recognized that the townspeople are likely to really want to deal with her. Plus 10 prestige and plus 1 persuasion in any territory where trading is allowed. But if there are rumors about her bad behavior in the territory, the bonus does not work in any way. Financial management, level 2. The player has learned something about how to handle property. She is more sensitive to numbers, treasures. She has an idea of what items are currently trending in her area, and also has little knowledge in the field of carrying property. 2 to the weight of the transported money, plus 2 to the treasure finds and automatic access to approximate information about goods in the player's location. Tourism, level 1, as a businessman, the player often crosses mountains and faces all kinds of difficulties. Endurance plus 1, cooking plus 1, food connoisseur plus 1, resistance plus 1. And the most important skill that Quan was able to get is the language of Palea, one of the six languages that are provided in this region. This language is also a means of communication between humanoids of the human type. Approximately 3,500 NPCs speak only this language. 
after listening to everything. The Knight of the Vanguard asks about how all these skills are related to the military craft. The players who came started laughing with the skills that Quan had received. The girl tells them to laugh as much as they want, because they will also have to at least learn the language of Palia. Let them not come to her later so that she reads something to them. One of the players tells Huang Quan to relax and in general they came to invite her to hunt with them, because she will steam up in the tavern to raise her level while sitting in the tavern. You can gain much more experience on monsters. The girl is unhappy and says that her comrades are laughing at her because she lacks attacking skills. But the girl from the company says that Sister Quan misunderstood everything and they just wanted them to see something. The girl pulls out a weapon, which Suin is very surprised at and asks where they got it from. The long-haired young man replies that Uncle Anti-Mag took novice blacksmiths as apprentices and yesterday they learned to forge. And since this young man is engaged in wood, they asked him for wood of excellent quality and so he became a kind of woodcutter. However, no one thought that it would be possible to make such a cool cold murder weapon. He hands Quan a crossbow and says that he made it especially for her. Because you don't need attacking skills to use it, you just need to pull the trigger. The anti-magician smiles and says that he was overpraised, because it is a simple crossbow. But if it was a legendary bow or a lightning bow, then he could brag. The Knight of the Vanguard repeatedly asks if Heavenly Quan will go hunting with them, but the girl sadly replies that she is really very busy, so let them go without her. But then the owner of the tavern comes out and says that she is letting Quan and her friends go hunting, because if she does not progress well, she will miss a lot of money. Quan is surprised by the words of the hostess, because it seemed to her that she was quite cruel, but in fact very prudent. The hostess says that she lets her apprentice go only for one laziness. If she does not come, then she may not appear in the village at all. Quan thanks the redhead and says he will be on time. The players leave the village of Sinchu and Quan sees that there is a building on the territory of the children, so he asks his comrades what is going on there. Her comrades answer that those two zones were bought for real money. The price for one piece of land is 5 million. The Knight of the Vanguard heard that someone wants to build a watchtower. The brunette takes a bow in her hands and says that she has been mastering the archery skill for two days. It's all just automatic animation of shooting, accuracy is 90% out of 100% at 10 meters. And she also has the eagle eye skill, which increases the range of vision and allows you to shoot at previously unknown targets. After hearing all this, the Heavenly One says that she wants it too. The knight tells the girl to be careful when shooting, because the game is turned on friendly, so she should be focused so as not to hurt her friends. The brunette pulls the bowstring and shoots at the rat, hitting it the first time. Anti-Mage says that in this game there is a mechanic in which the affected mutants can call allies for help, but the mutants do not have a patrolled territory. At this time, Yatai has the phone that he requested from the system. He goes live, where he begins to communicate with new subscribers. He asks the viewers from the broadcast to send one, if it is heard, and they send it. Tai starts chatting and says that his PS5 and VR helmet have finally arrived today and he will be unpacking now. Messages about the maid come to him in the chat and Yatai does not immediately understand what is being discussed until he turns his head and notices the system behind him. The system says that there is a new task for him and after completing it he can rest. The girl gives him a book in which quests for the players of the village of Zinchu are painted. These are tasks for a group of players, but the levels of the players are still too low, so it's better for them to swing on rats for now. The system says that Tai does not understand the quest system and they need to exist normally because people need work. So in order to encourage players to play more, they introduce a quest system and gives them the opportunity for players to earn borrowed money in the game. Tai reads the quest book and gets to know the first one. In this quest, the number of players is limited to one person. Enemy class, weak. The plot is as follows. This is a cursed basement in which many lonely weirdos live. Every day they read manhua, manga, comics and watch streams. In old age, they consciously come to this basement to die peacefully. After death, their lonely and unsupported minds begin to summon mysterious eastern forces that turn them into terrible ghouls. And the goal of the players is to kill the ghoul. In this quest, Tai recognizes himself as a stay-at-home bachelor who likes to read manhua, manga, comics. He understands that the system described him in the quest and asks her what kind of passive aggression is in his direction. The system responds that there is nothing passive, because that's what I wrote about. In Earth's Educational Institution number 569, in a female dorm, one girl wakes up another named Ju. The waking girl asks Ju if she knows what day it is and she replies that today is the watchtower construction event at Nesser. And then she realizes that today she has an exam, she is late and she is not in the best position. The exam time is 120 minutes. The examiner says that you cannot cheat, talk, take before the call, use phones or other gadgets. The teacher asks if the students have any questions and Wang Ju asks about what subject they are writing. The teacher is outwardly calm, 
But inside she is furious, because how long ago such audacious students have gone, they don't even think about preparation. The examiner says that the subject is called the principle of communication and by the way, in her words, this is the most difficult subject in the semester. Wang Ju takes the task sheet from his hand and begins to read it. Reading, she realizes that she does not understand the language in which it is written. Taking a deep breath, she thinks that she has been in a different situation, and even more than once. At such moments, it is better to first review all the tasks and solve the easiest one first. After a while, they realize that they cannot solve the tasks and decide to simply retake the exam. Then Wang Ju realizes that she sees what her classmate wrote. She sees her answers, although she is at a decent distance from her and she decides to copy from her. The examiner notices that Ju is writing quickly and thinking that the girl is cheating, she starts walking next to her desk. Both the girl's hands are on the table, nothing suspicious, besides, all the tasks are solved consistently, and the girl writes quite confidently. The examiner is shocked and thinks that the girl is a genius. The president reads some kind of summary and feedback mechanism in a dream. He is informed that this is the language of Palia. The player has studied him in the game and remember him in real life as a mother. Words, sounds, and even grammar. True, all this knowledge is at the level of a junior high school student, but this player can be called a kind of native speaker. And this means that everything learned inside the game goes into real life with the player, including abilities. The speaker says that if they had such technologies, they would have already made a technological breakthrough because they would be able to quickly and effectively train special personnel right inside the game. The president remembers Limitless, who came to him and says that he will contact Nesser. Wang Ju comes from the exam and immediately enters the game as a player Wang Yi, a brunette archer. In the game, she comes out of her room and runs to her playmates. She tells them about the exam and they just chat. Kim approaches them and says that today is the day the tower was built. This will allow them to have an additional strategic point. And in a battle with rats and other mutants, players will always have the opportunity to retreat and hide in the tower, and before leaving it, you can explore the area. Kim hopes that the construction of the tower will unite players even stronger and simplify the execution of quests. The head of the village approaches the players and Kim says that they are ready. Everyone starts with the construction of the tower.